The initial class in the college had something like 10 or 12 students. That's where we st they started. Uh, and the reason it started was actually motivated by uh, our president emeritus, uh, Dr. and Rabbi David Lieber. If we can create a college coming from a Jewish perspective, but also insisting that you look at other cultures, Western cultures and other international cultures, so that when you leave here, you have your own self-ethic. With the idea being that we would be able to graduate students who would have a substantively different undergraduate experience that occurs at the other 3,000 plus uh, four-year colleges and universities that now exist in the United States. You're all here participating in a student leadership program and I want you to start seeing the world more broadly than most students tend to see it. This is a leadership workshop, leadership seminar. How does one person become a leader? When you first came in front of this wall and I gave you all your instructions, first impressions as you were standing there looking at the wall? Impossible. Tell me, how did you feel as you were going up and over the wall? And people supporting me, so I felt kind of secure about it. Once you're, you got over, your feet hit the platform behind there, then what did you think? I was happy. Yeah? Yeah. Definitely, because I'm petrified of heights, so it was great. Cool, but so you like conquered a fear there. That's awesome. There's many programs at this university that encourage further involvement, such as peer mentoring programs uh, and mentor programs, which get students who would like to see what they're getting themselves into in terms of graduate schools and their careers. The idea of this program is to foster a relationship between a student who wants to get into this professional field and the professional in that field. My major is communications, arts and advocacy. My major is business and I actually work in the Hall of The best thing about the school is definitely the classes and the sizes and the accessibility of the staff and the professors. It just way to be able to walk in anybody's office and have all your questions answered. How, how is the grading policy? This is a small school, so I'm not, I don't grade students on a bell curve. I don't think about normal distribution. I don't curve things. I grade students based on how well they do. And if everyone gets deserves an A in the class, they all get A's. Generally, students work hard. You know, the classes are small, as you know. Yeah. And so uh, students don't, uh, can't really disappear. If they do, I kind of wonder, well, what, what happened to that person? I might send them a little email, haven't seen you in a while, what's up? And, and if they have problems, they will come and talk to me. The fact that I can just walk into my teacher's room and say, you know, I didn't really understand what we did in class, and then him go over it all over again for me, where it's really great. People. All right, or then you have the issues of disabled and so on. Do you cover expensive treatments? And if so, which ones? Okay, what are other kinds of questions in regard to the what issues? Okay, and it might be insurance companies. Why, 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 what, what, what? We know our professors very well, they all know our names and nicknames and probably a fair bit of, you know, of our life stories actually. And uh, you know, the professors are all fantastic, they you know, are very accomplished in their fields. When you're here, uh, your academics are, are top notch, they're very good professors and the professor-student relationships are unbeatable anywhere else. Yes, he is sort of the conscience of the film. He's there to intercede in the hope that things will go right. Most commuter students either live in the LA area or are from the LA area. Most of the students in the entire campus, including the residents, are from out of the city and out of state. My name's Lori Goldstein. I'm from Augusta, Georgia. Berkeley, California. Okay. <laughs> I'm from Maine. Well, actually, I'm Russian, and I moved to Los Angeles six years ago. We have people all over the world here, from Sudan. We have students from Bulgaria. We have students from Israel, and all over the country.
because it's such a small school, it's so much better to be living in the dorms where you can get to know every single person. There's four sets of dorm rooms up on the camp for the residents. As you can see, the rooms are very spacious. This is one of the biggest and top rated uh, dorm rooms uh, across the country. We do have apartments on campus where if you are either over 21 years old, 21 and over, or you're a graduate student, you're allowed to live in the apartments. This is Alicia Sikorsky. It's been pretty good. I like how everybody knows each other and it's small class sizes so the teachers really care about you. And you have a lot of opportunities to get involved and make a difference here because it's such a small community so you can really do whatever you want. Uh, just yesterday we had a belly dancer come in and she was belly dancing for us and we do Israeli dancing and we have themes around the Jewish holidays and um, there's always events trying to get people involved and that's another really good thing about this school is because we try to get everyone involved. But we want you when you leave here to be societal role models. We believe that a core of what we're trying to, to get you to put into your body and soul is a responsibility to serve the communities you're in. That's the motivation for our current service learning program and we're going to keep evolving that program to try and find other ways to deepen uh, your experience while in school. And I'm very passionate about the school and that's why I don't think it should be a secret that all students who come here should understand that anything is possible here.